Is High Noon an un-American piece of communist propaganda? What do you think? Everything you call yours will be taken away. Howdy, I'm Rex Hooper, and I love movies, especially westerns. And it's western movies that have been made since the beginning of cinema history. Westerns, most of the time, don't receive the same level of success in terms of box office sales or Academy Awards as other genres. But westerns persist. They have a strong following among folks like myself that just can't get enough of the West. One of my favorite Western movies is High Noon. High Noon is a 1952 classic starring Gary Cooper. And unlike so many other Westerns, it was a massive box office success at the time it was released and resulted in several Academy Award nominations and wins for the folks involved in making the picture. And yet, to this day, High Noon remains a controversial movie. I read an interview that, that, that you gave, John, in which you said you objected to High Noon, to the film itself. You said it was un-American. Um, I saw that film, and I guess a lot of people here in this audience would have seen that film, and, and I, for the life of me, can't see what's un-American about it. Well, a whole city of people that have come across the plains and suffered all kinds of hardships are suddenly afraid to help out a sheriff because three men are coming into town that are tough. Now he goes to them and pleads them and he goes into the church and for some reason the women are all sitting on one side of the church and the men are sitting all on the other side of the church and he pleads his case and the men say no, no, no and the women get up and say you're yellow, you're cowards. I don't, I don't think that ever happens in the United States. Then at the end of the picture, he took the, the United States Marshal badge, threw it down, stepped on it, and walked off. I think those things are just a little bit un-American. Why? Well, probably got something to do with the fact that four of the key collaborators that put together the movie were communists and they were under trial for the House Committee of Un-American Activity. Some folks have gone on to say that High Noon is a parable for communism in America. But is that true? If a person defends the activities of communist nations while consistently attacking the domestic and foreign policy of the United States, she may be a communist. If a person does all these things over a period of time, he must be a communist. But there are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. High Noon tells the story of a sheriff on the day of his wedding. He's ready to give up the life of being a lawman, but here's news that an uh, old enemy of his is coming back for vengeance on the high noon train. It was coming looking for him. So this sheriff, played by Gary Cooper, is faced with a dilemma. Does he stay and face off against Frank Miller, the man looking to get revenge for having sent him away? Or does he flee town with his new wife, ready to start a new life? Well, if you just tell me what this is all about. I sent a man up five years ago for murder. He was supposed to hang. But up north, they commuted it to life. Now he's free. I don't know how. Anyway, it looks like he's coming back. I still don't understand. He's a... Well, he was always wild, kind of crazy. He'll, he'll probably make trouble. But that's no concern of yours, not anymore. I'm the one who sent him up. Well, that was part of your job. That's finished now. They've got a new marshal. Won't be here till tomorrow. Seems to me I've got to stay. Anyway, I'm the same man with or without this. Caught between staying to face the villain Frank Miller or running away with his new bride, Will Kane, played like Gary Cooper, has an impossible choice to make. 
and only a short amount of time to do it, for that noon train is rolling in. And all throughout the movie, there's constant shots and references to the clock ticking away. In fact, the whole movie takes place in almost real time to heighten the tension. What is Will Kane gonna do? One of the reasons why I love High Noon so much is that beautiful black and white photography. Story goes that apparently the cinematographer was almost fired for making it far too high contrast and dark. But of course, uh, he wasn't fired. <laughs> it was the idea. That was the, the point of the film. They wanted to try and replicate some of the photographs of the Civil War era. Today, the black and white cinematography of High Noon is studied in film classes and shown as an example of how beautiful the monochrome look can be for cinema. The black and white photography, the constant references to clocks, and the almost real-time runtime of the story gives the whole thing a dreamlike or nightmare-like quality. And it is almost like a nightmare is how the story plays out. John Wayne criticized the film as being un-American because he said that the townsfolk wouldn't be that cowardice, but in a nightmare, they would be. Why the movie is successful, in my opinion, is because it captures that psychological drama of a nightmare if you were on your own and no one was willing to help. Do I believe that High Noon is a piece of uh, communist propaganda? No, I don't. I just don't buy it. Why? Well, because, like any other movie, is it's a collaborative effort. Uh, the people that were involved in it, they may have had some political leanings that may not align with others, but they were all telling a greater story. It's not just one vision or one message. You have the director, the producers, the writers, the actors, the cinematographers, the music. They're all applying their own contribution to a bigger piece of collaborative art. I think the truth is, is because the movie is so good, and the, the plot so timeless, is that you can apply multiple interpretations to the meaning of the movie. Former US presidents Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush have all stated openly that among their favorite movies ever is High Noon. The popularity of High Noon among leaders is probably because they see themselves in the Gary Cooper, Will Kane character. A leader who's isolated from their constituents and forced into making hard choices between unappealing options. Former President Gerald Ford said his favorite movie was Home Alone. One of the greatest things about High Noon is of course that lead protagonist, Will Kane, played by Gary Cooper. For me, it is one of Gary Cooper's finest roles. What a great performance, what a great actor. He even won the Oscar for it. For me, Gary Cooper is not a big action guy. He's a good reaction guy. And it's in that face, in the pained expression, in the impossible decision he's faced with, you see it all in that face. It's a great performance. Of course, he won the Academy Award for it. I heard the story go that Gary Cooper was in an enormous amount of pain during the whole filming of High Noon because of back problems he had. So I guess that makes him a method actor because the pain that you see this man struggling with in terms of his decisions the character has to make I believe are reflected on that face. Of course, Gary Cooper was just in pain because of his back. But it does make for a more immersive experience for those of us watching the movie. Gary Cooper fought to get the role. He wanted the role because he loved the script and he loved the story. For him, the story mirrored the lessons that his father had taught him. Gary Cooper's father was a Montana State Supreme Court Justice, and he always taught his son that law enforcement is every citizen's duty. If there's any kind of ist, or ism associated with High Noon for me, it would be not communism, but feminism, because of all the strong female characters there are in this film. My favorite character in High Noon is Katie Jurado's character, Helen Ramirez, a Mexican businesswoman who speaks tough and who speaks smart. 
She seems to be the only character that truly understands the impact of what Will Kane's decision to stay means, and what it means for the town. If you want to know why I'm leaving? Then listen. Kane will be a dead man in half an hour, and nobody is going to do anything about it. And when he dies, this town dies too. I can feel it. I am all alone in the world. I have to make a living. So I'm going someplace else. That's all. And as for you, I don't like anybody to put his hands on me unless I want him to. And I don't like you to anymore. John Wayne famously said that he didn't like High Noon, said it was un-American. But his opinions on the movie changed when the tide of public opinion changed. You see, it was a huge success at the time. It won lots of Academy Awards. John Wayne himself even accepted the Academy Award for Gary Cooper on his behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to see that they're giving this to a man who is not only most deserving, but has conducted himself throughout his years in our business in a manner that we can all be proud of him. Coop and I have been friends hunting and fishing for more years than I like to remember. He's one of the nicest fellows I know. I don't know anybody any nicer. And our kinship goes further than that friendship because we both fell off our horses into pictures together. Now that I'm through being such a good sport, spouted all this good sportsmanship, I'm gonna go back and find my business manager, an agent, producer, and three name writer, and find out why I didn't get High Noon instead of Cooper. <laughs> I can't fire any of these very expensive fellas, but I can at least run my 1930 Chevrolet into one of their big black new Cadillacs. He was a fan of the movie at one point, but his opinion changed because there was controversy around the film. Later in life, John Wayne would go on to say that it was un-American, but that's not what he thought originally. Too often, how we feel about something gets muddied in the politics around the thing. Take the art on its own terms, not on what other people are telling you it's about. Make your own mind up about what it means, or what it means to you. What makes High Noon so great? Well, there's lots of things that make it great. But for me, ultimately, it's because of the story and the fact that it's like an ancient myth. The story of High Noon could take place in the 1800s or a thousand years before or a thousand years in the future. And it'll still be a great story because it's about what it means to be human. The struggles internally, just like the great works of the Greek myths or Shakespeare, is that this can be applied and adapted in many different ways, and still, at the heart of it, you have humanity. What this story about, to me, is not political. It's more personal. About a man's choice between desire and duty. But hey, what do I know? I'm just one guy. Who likes to watch movies? What do you think of High Noon? Do you think it's a political film? What do you think the real message of High Noon is? And does it have one? Or is it just meant to be entertaining? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you've gotten anything from this movie, even just a recommendation to see High Noon, if you've not seen it before, or to go watch it again, I suggest you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Of course, another great thing about the movie that I forgot to mention is Dmitry Tompkins' incredible score and that wonderful theme song. I like to make some Western music myself. If you're interested in supporting this channel and uh, helping it grow, then I suggest you help me out and go check out my album Frontera USA on the Bandcamp and on the Spotify. I don't have a Patreon account, so it's a nice way of supporting me and my work and getting to know you fellas and telling you all about westerns. Alright, I'll see you later on, cowpokes. Further on down the trail. <laughs>